Hello and welcome back to our special research radio program that focuses on Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and his mission of achieving liberty, equality, and fraternity. I'm Abhishek, and in this week's episode, we'll speak about what it takes to build unity among the working class. Specifically, we we'll look at how Dr. Ambedkar led movements in the Konkan region against the courts or landlords who gave unfair remunerations to tenants. and in the bombay presidency in favor of garnering humane working conditions for the working class including mill workers my guest today is santosh sudadkar who teaches at the department of history of gondwana university in gadchiroli maharashtra dr sudadkar's research areas include peasant labor caste and dalit history we'll be discussing his epw article titled mukti kon pathe caste and class in ambedkar struggle and i do recommend reading it by clicking the link in the show notes thank you for joining us santosh happy to have you on the show uh, thank you abhishek uh, for inviting me for this uh, interview and thank you to epw so in your article you've written that uh, you know quote most historical accounts on ambedkar's movement pointed out that the mobilization was largely limited dalits and even among them the mahars end quote can you tell us about the limitations of such uh, accounts so far uh, social scientists who have written on ambedkar they have reduced to ambedkar's movement limited to dalit based political movement and uh, this was this approach was uh, propagated from ambedkar's time and later uh, it came into academic writings because when ambedkar was also doing all these struggles uh, it was labeled that uh, this is a the mahar mahar movement and uh, it was continue after that also in academic movement so i'm actually i'm not objecting that the large numbers of followers of this movement were not dalits but it was not true that the social base was never expanded that that is my that is my issue uh, instead of saying that only dalits uh, were the followers of ambedkar's movement i would like to see the complexities provided to dalit leadership and their party in indian political sphere so one need to understand that why ambedkar's political parties that the, the followers are not expanding at greater level and uh, whenever they uh, the, the, the social base expanded the how uh, it was uh, it was covered by other academic scholars therefore i suggest to see major hurdles that anti caste movement was experiencing while propagating casteless casteless agenda for all because ambedkar never uh, said that uh, the, the movement is only for dalit so he always propagated the anti caste agenda Uh, th- th- that's why we need to see this anti khoti struggle and the working class struggle in bombay so we could see that large numbers of non dalit caste were joining ambedkar's ongoing struggle and they were taking anti caste position as they were coming together as a class uh, in konkan region and in bombay and uh, uh, that, that's why that's why we could see that uh, in uh, in konkan region that uh, the social base of ambedkar's movement was continuously expanding we have a detailed records of home department british records and other records colonial records also that are clearly suggesting that uh, uh, many agri bhandari maratha caste and kunbi caste they were supporting to ambedkar when ambedkar in 1932 ambedkar went to round table conference this bhandari vijay patrika uh, run by this bhandari the middle caste they were supporting to ambedkar and uh, when ambedkar launched uh, uh, peasant protest that was the uh, biggest uh, peasant protest in modern maharashtra large number of uh, non dalit caste joined ambedkar and uh, and they were uh, they, these all tenants while fighting against this landlords courts landlords they were coming together and they were sticking together and not going against each other so that kind of unity we could see in konkan region Yes, yes, and and before we go ahead, uh, what made you interested in focusing on these two regions uh, specifically? So these two mass movements in these regions were uh, were important for me to look uh, into because they were organically connected in terms of support and engagement in nineteen thirties politics, and due to its uh, organic connection, it, it intensified their struggles in Bombay also and in Konkan also. So that's why for me it was very interesting that uh, the way Bombay politics was influencing to Konkan politics and the Konkan politics, which was led by these uh, tenants and uh, independent labor party, which was formed by Ambedkar and uh, Ambedkar's activists, they were leading this struggle against the. Khoti structure the courts were the landlord and the courtist system was landlordism where the tenants were being uh, exploited and there were large numbers of tenants from maratha caste kunbi uh, bhandari agri mahar and other caste they were so uh, th- this was very vibrant struggle and uh, gigantic mass protests were emerging against landlordism in kokan the the important point of this struggle was that uh, it was it, uh, it it had highlighted during this uh, the, this struggle in 1930s and uh, uh, first half of the 40s uh, they were saying that we have a two enemies that is a capitalism and brahminism and i think uh, this this was a new political approach uh, in political discourse in 1930s the first time even it, it, 
this approach the fighting against uh, brahminism and capitalism this approach was not coming from a left movement but it was coming from anti caste movement that they were saying that we have two enemies scholars like rajnarayan chandavarkar uh, who has written on bombay he has made his point that the kokan politics was not influencing to bombay politics but what i what i could see through my archival work that and uh, the many records from the newspapers that there was a very organic connection between uh, the politics was happening in bombay and in konkan region so that's why i felt uh, that this is a very important event in indian politics where the caste and class uh, issues are being addressed together right right so so it was important to link uh, the struggles in both the regions you've already started sharing your research process and and i wanted to learn more about that uh, particularly in terms of how you approach primary and secondary sources as a historian when you are doing uh, history on uh, caste and untouchability you need to understand the functioning of caste and the mechanism of caste and the caste theories and all otherwise uh, uh, it is very difficult to read archival sources because the connotation and the the, the 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 politics is behind in recording the sources is very complicated in terms of uh, knowing uh, the facts so uh, what i could see that uh, there is a great need of doing oral history because uh, and the, and that oral history part is missing uh, when scholars have work on ambedkar and uh, dalit and uh, untouchables history and uh, moreover uh, there is a great need of uh, finding rural archives like for example there there are uh, different archives in uh, at tehsil level at district level magistrate records and the revenue records those are the records where we could find a detailed history of uh, these uh, conflicts and all when i was going through these uh, national newspapers english newspapers and uh, some of the dominant newspapers or the po- political uh, pa- parties newspapers mouthpiece so we see that uh, they are not covering uh, the, in detail uh, the history of uh, dalit protest or uh, history of caste so that th- that part is missing so, so somewhere you have to go to the go to news uh, local newspapers to find uh, the con- contradictions or the or the, the new light on that Uh, also it is important to develop new methodology to understand anti caste protest and this could be done with the help of other disciplines like sociology and uh, that's what we could see that in maharashtra also it was a long for a long period comrade sharad patil try to develop this uh, idea uh, this theory of mafua marx kul ambedkar where through which he was he was he was providing some tools to look at archival sources so without understanding functioning of caste untouchability gender and the nature of class structure one cannot read the primary sources on anti caste movement that's what uh, i would i have understood mm-hmm. and is there an example that you would like to share uh, based on your own research and how you've tried to apply this yeah of course particularly uh, like when i was looking at uh, some strikes were happening in um, konkan region in particularly in uh, some villages for longer time that those strikes went for 8 years uh, and uh, tenants uh, stop cultivating landlords uh, stop uh, cultivating landlords land and uh, they were not going to hear their their field so th- this was a very long strikes for 8 years 6 years but uh, these stories were not covered in national uh, newspapers or the newspapers were running in bombay but you could find detail uh, Uh, information about uh, these uh, strikes in local newspapers you would find that they they, they are giving you hints Uh, to look at uh, there are some caste atrocities or there is a conflict between within the, within tenants or the conflict what kind of conflicts is happening between courts and tenants so the, that detailed records uh, one could find in those uh, you know local newspapers if this perception is there all the time uh, you could uh, we, we could easily uh, highlight this perception in national newspapers where they were giving importance to uh, so called nationalist uh, news okay the, the news uh, coming from the rural protest or coming from the dalit adivasis or uh, women's protest is not, had not given any importance so in that case uh, the, the particularly this national newspaper uh, being published in india, english are giving less importance compared to this uh, vernacular languages mm-hmm. so you find more data records in vernacular Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it's also so limiting that uh, historical uh, archival methods, as we were talking about methodology, you know, relies on printed uh, text, and obviously there have been attempts by uh, scholars to use other methods like uh, you know oral history and uh, triangulating different sources. So, um, and we also had uh, Professor Chinnaya Jangam who spoke about uh, you know reading the government records and what they speak about uh, you know um, um, uh, the uh, subjects under the colonial rule and you know how they are discussed by. the administrators and learning from from those records um, yeah so but I, there is a actually great need of doing oral history on ambedkar's movement and mm-hmm. particularly on the local leadership of ambedkar's movement and that has not done so far mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So the, the gaps still persist yeah
Uh, and we've spoken about the constituents of uh, Ambedkar's independent Labour Party uh, early in the conversation and how he tried to expand that. Uh, can we discuss his efforts to reveal Congress's pro-bourgeoisie and you know pro-Khoti system, um, including with the trade dispute bill that that essentially criminalized uh, protests by unions? For Ambedkar, the Congress position uh, on workers and peasant issue remain coercive and against their interests. Uh, when the Congress came into power uh, in Bombay in 1937, in Bombay provincial government, it supported, openly supported to Khoti landlordism. Before that also in 1915, we could see that uh, Pune Congress committee had passed the resolution that we need to protect Khoti system. And before that also, Tilak, uh, Bal Gangadhar Tilak had written continuously in Maratha to uh, that uh, the, the landlordism is a natural right of these uh, courts and we should not uh, abolish them. So we could see that there is a continuity in the Congress program also that they are supporting to Khoti system. And when Ambedkar brought a bill in 1937 in the Bombay Assembly, Congress was not ready to have a discussion on the bill. And the bill was pending for 10 months and after that Congress government resigned from the power. And during this time also we could see that Congress introduced a new bill that, that was called the Trade Dispute Bill in 1938. And according to this bill, uh, the conciliation made mandatory between factory owners and workers. If workers want to go for strike, they need to have a talk dialogue with uh, owners. So Ambedkar called this strike uh, black act and uh, uh, that uh, it is against the liberty of workers. Okay, And Ambedkar clearly uh, positioned that this is uh, a worker's right to go on strike. Okay, so uh, you, we, we, we can see that during this strike also Ambedkar organized strike and the left parties, they joined them and it was a it was the first time in Indian history that we could see that the left movement and the Ambedkar's movement, they were, they came on, uh, they came together in 1938 on same platform and they fought together. So during this strike also, uh, they opened, uh, the Congress government was in leadership, they were in power, so the uh, police was under them and uh, they opened fire on unarmed workers and curbed their protest in Bombay. So Ambedkar was suggesting that uh, uh, the Congress is supporting to bourgeois interest and uh, they, are, they are against. It was very easy for the Congress to mobilize uh, different tenants against uh, uh, the ILPs and Ambedkar's mobilization through uh, provoking their caste interest. So uh, yeah, we could see that how uh, they bought this trade dispute because earlier Congress was opposing to this kind of bill. But when they came in power, they went for violence and they supported even Sardar Patel and all other uh, leaders. They went to uh, Konkan region and they promised Khots that we are not going to abolish Khoti system. So Ambedkar, uh, he was writing in Janta and uh, other his writings also that uh, the Congress is pro-capitalist, post pro-bourgeois and uh, pro-land, uh, the landowning caste. And he was not agree to believe that the Congress is anti-imperialist force. And that's why he he was saying that the, the, there should be a national level alliance uh, which can, which can, which can uh, you know, oppose to the Congress politics, which is a coercive nationalism, okay, which is labeling to other protests uh, anti-national. So uh, in that case, uh, his uh, news weekly, Janta, was covering different stories uh, from the uh, different corners of India that uh, those uh, of, uh, the, of the movements, uh, those who are fighting for uh, peasant and workers. And particularly among them, we could see there were many uh, stories from Bhai Muzumdar from Bengal and Swami Sahajanand from Bihar, uh, Kisan leader. So uh, the, the, the way the Swami Sahajanand was uh, organizing work, uh, peasants and all and uh, fighting for their rights, um, it appealed Ambedkar and Ambedkar attracted towards Swami Sahajanand and he was trying to build a national level alliance. Alliance. Because this was a time in 1930s where we see that Ambedkar was trying to bring together uh, Marxist forces and socialist forces. And even he wrote in uh, caste, uh, Annihilation of Caste also, he, he is having continuously dialogue with socialists that they should, they, they are the natural allies and that they should come together. But that was not happening. So he was looking at uh, different uh, fronts. Uh, and he was, uh, he met to Swami Sahajanand in 1930 when he uh, visited to Bombay. And he appealed him to form a national level alliance along with his party. But this could not materialize. So uh, we could see that there was a great attempt from Ambedkar to, uh, you know, uh, to form alliance with the left party also. Because that time, the, uh, Ambedkar's party's flag was red flag and the slogans were the Lal Bauta Ki Jai and all. So, uh, and against the capitalism and Brahminism. So it was, a, uh, Ambedkar was trying to, you know, form alliance in a new way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is also an extremely difficult time uh, because the Congress has taken this position of being the sole uh, anti-imperialist, as they called themselves, uh, yeah. voice. So, yeah. you know, so that uh, the, the 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 challenge of then bringing together 
parties to be against uh, the congress as well um, was was possibly extremely challenging yes. um, so so we understand that you know his his work was happening at the national level and also at really localized levels yeah. um, and uh, before we uh, i wanted to understand a little about you know one of his um, ways of protesting against the khoti system uh, was that urging uh, tenants to take home the corn that they produced uh, and you also you know mentioned that he publicly asserted that he would com- accompany dissenting tenants uh, uh, farm laborers to jail if they did this uh, so if you could uh, tell us more about uh, ambedkar's uh, views on the methods to drive social change um, and the importance he placed on quote uh, mass struggle accompanied by legal processes end quote as you've written 1930s period is very important because uh, we see very uh, gigantic very vibrant mass struggles are happening during this time and at the same time ambedkar is ambedkar is seeking legal uh, legal forms or legal processes to abolish different exploitative structures and that is coming from since uh, 1920s and after that uh, particularly from uh, 1970s mahar satyagraha where uh, all the legal issues uh, were taken forward uh, for water rights and all and civil rights so for ambedkar he uh, he believe in active role of human agency for social change he knew that modernity uh, itself would not destroy caste feudal system because the, the way modernity had uh, enter in india he knew the limitations of modernity and the capitalism and the colonial economy because it was coming in hand in hand with uh, the capital the feudal and uh, the dominant culture of indian society so it was not coming in pure form so he he knew that there should be a, a strong uh, uh, strong push from this human agency for the change and uh, he wanted to uh, destroy the materiality of caste he was trying he was understanding this time uh, he, these days and theorizing the materiality of caste and the cul- brahminical cultural hegemony uh, he uh, during this time we could see that he was asking people to leave their caste based occupation and find new jobs opportunities in modern economy because uh, as what uh, nandini guptu has written that uh, in villages there is a face to face exploitation but in uh, cities you find that uh, that kind of uh, exploitation is not directly possible for uh, caste society so uh, although they, they it is happening in different forms so uh, he criticized the exploitative nature of colonial economy and its collaboration with brahminical caste culture so thus uh, throughout this mass struggles he was rationalizing pe- people against caste relation and patriarchy it was uh, uh, it was uh, a challenge before ambedkar that he was parallelly fighting against caste patriarchy and class yeah, and uh, the, 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 those were the complexities only before anti caste uh, revolution not in front of class revolution uh, or the socialist or the left organization during this time if you see under khoti struggle he was rationalizing tenants that how feudal interest of courts was exploiting all tenants equally uh, and the, how the caste was breaking their unity to fight against the courts so he and his uh, activist had to uh, explain uh, practices of caste responsible for their slavery to build class consciousness so he was moving towards a class consciousness so he was asking them to feel oneness one so they all tenants are one and uh, they should have their own class consciousness therefore uh, while mobilizing uh, tenants on class line he continuously inserted the critic of brahminism which form strong unity among touchable and untouchable tenants because it was very difficult ambedkar in mass struggle to form unity or the form unity kind of class consciousness among all the tenants because they are coming from in they are coming uh, coming from in caste hierarchy and uh, they, there is always interest next to caste uh, they, they like immediate caste so from getting uh, interest from uh, down to the caste and up to the caste so uh, for for uh, making them as a class ambedkar had to insert the critic of brahminism he was not simply asking them to feel that they are the one they are they are tenants and uh, they are one so he had to uh, de-brahminize uh, the culture and they ha- he had to to make them stand uh, against uh, their caste interest and their patriarchal interest so they so they could become a uh, class so it was a very uh, revolutionary position to ask this different maratha kunbi agri bandari caste to stand together untouchable caste and not to not to uh, not to exercise their caste interest uh, during this time we could see that uh, he asked tenants not to work on khot's land and not to provide any kind of service to them so in many villages land was uh, not cultivated for several years and therefore courts uh, uh, during this time f- uh, filed court cases against them and we uh, this is very interesting data we have, uh, one could see uh, in ambedkar's movement that these all different caste they were not uh, uh, witnessing each uh, against uh, different caste in court 
okay so this maratha caste also or kurmi kunbi caste also they are not standing against mahars okay so courts uh, they were finding a witness but they were not getting any single witness in different uh, court cases to bring uh, in court so uh, this, this was a very strong unity and uh, through this unity ambedkar was through this mass movement ambedkar was trying to destroy the collaboration between courts and the british rulers because there was a agreement between courts and uh, british rulers uh, in 1980s according to this kothi act that uh, unless and until uh, uh, courts are providing uh, this revenue to the british government they can uh, they can continue with their kothi rights but ambedkar was trying to uh, demolish demolish that uh, uh, through not uh, giving uh, revenue to courts so and at the same time in 1937 he put bill in bombay legislative assembly to abolish kothi system but we could see that kothi system was abolished after ind- independence only so ambedkar was fighting on, uh, at both level he was trying to seek a legal actions also legal uh, safeguards also and uh, he was giving more importance to the mass movement at this time Mm-hmm. I think uh, one part that you put, that you mentioned uh, was I found quite powerful, especially powerful where you said that you know uh, to uh, to deal with uh, to to decast and you know address patriarchy and to become class. Um, yeah. So so the fact that class you know is is in it commonly understood as existing, um, but because of caste, the the huge uh, kind deep kinds of uh, factionalism that. that continues to exist but that he uh, was trying to uh, address and get beyond um it was is, is is insightful to understand efforts to change this through mass struggle um, yeah. and and another thing that you also mentioned is the role of uh, ambedkari jalsas yeah. um, and i found that really insightful as somebody who's also interested in uh, you know uh, culture and, and social arts so i was interested in uh, you know what you found about their role in driving social change we can see in 1930s uh, the new mode of publicity was coming up through ambedkar's movement as i have already pointed out that uh, this uh, uh, many newspaper national newspapers and that they, they were not covering news what was happening in bombay and uh, it was a strong hold of ambedkar's movement in bombay uh, particularly in uh, labor uh, labor camps in uh, matunga labor camp naigao labor camp and different labor camps uh, ambedkar's independent labor party has had a strong hold Uh, on this uh, working class locality to mobilize these uh, workers um, uh, uh, in 1930s this ambedkar jalsa emerge uh, and uh, then let in the later period it uh, uh, spread across maharashtra and uh, people started mobilizing people through these jalsas jalsas were the, was the uh, singing group uh, and it was influence and uh, uh, there was a tradition of tamasha but uh, the tamasha was not uh, it, it was not like a tamasha but it, in jalsas the singers will sing songs and uh, there was a dialogue also in the jalsas and uh, uh, bhajni mandali was a new form of exp- uh, expression this was a new fa- uh, new form of expression and mobilization pattern uh, that was growing in working class localities in bombay this uh, jalsas became uh, very strong channels to mobilizing workers in bombay to support uh, this khoti system and to fight for, fight for workers uh, rights and particularly uh, whatever uh, i have read in 1938 strike that uh, these uh, jalsas were going around uh, in uh, those uh, uh, labor camps working class localities and they were mobilizing people so they, they, as i as i said earlier that there was a organic connection between uh, the working class movement in bombay and Kon- anti khoti movement in konkan region we could see this is this is very interesting that when uh, many khot landlords they were Uh, they they were filing case against tenants and uh, the, the tenants were helpless to run their cases in court these workers in bombay they were they started collecting front through jalsas so they would they would organize uh, this jalsas uh, in labor camps people will gather there they will uh, they, they will uh, rationalize them they will they will talk about capitalism they will talk about the caste exploitation in the rural areas and they will appeal people to donate uh, fund for these cases and uh, particularly uh, they, there were uh, big cases like uh, induri uh, uh, case and uh, different cases were there for that they collected fund so uh, these workers were collecting fund and they were mobilizing people from bombay to support uh, strikes and the, and the ongoing struggle in konkan region and the interesting is one one more interesting thing is that this jalsa was uh, influenced by this anti uh, long anti caste tradition particularly kabir pant ramanand pant nath pant and varkari pant and uh, uh, janta was playing important uh, ambedkar's uh, news weekly was playing important role for giving them insight to criticize capitalism and brahminism so you you would find uh, this is very interesting that these workers are criticizing capitalism not on the uh, on the basis of class orientation but they had a very strong position or understanding of knowing how brahminical culture is dividing to workers 
okay so the the, the caste issue is coming into their dialogue and their songs the gender issue patriarchal exploitation and the and and feudal exploitation capitalist exploitation that everything uh, that different forms of exploitation was uh, coming in their ideology so uh, and it was a satyashodak movement's influence also though, although ambedkar was preaching ambedkar was uh, ambedkar's ideas were influencing them uh, to to them but parallelly this bhakti movement uh, this uh, kabir tradition tukaram tradition and uh, satyashodak movement's tradition they had a different kind of uh, pattern of mobilization that 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 were also influencing to this uh, jalsa so it is very interesting that uh, the detailed critic of exploitative village caste economy started appearing in the content of ambedkar jalsa and uh, these jalsas provided minute observation on economic relation in the balutadari system but in the barter system and explain the caste and class experiences in rural and urban areas and particularly women also that in their songs uh, particularly in movie they they uh, they were narrating uh, the stories of uh, uh, exploitation in factories and mills and municipality they were working and uh, in their areas or in back to the villages so it was uh, we, uh, the, the, this new mode of uh, uh, publicity was uh, uh, very uh, strong in ambedkar's movement to build ambedkar's uh, revolution so it was very interesting yeah and that that's quite impactful especially uh, what you highlighted about the jalsas being an important mode of communication uh, in the absence of uh, uh, accurate and fair uh, newspaper coverage the running thread through this conversation has been obviously the uh, the work against the khoti system in the konkan region um, and the organizing of workers uh, in, in particularly mill workers in the bombay presidency area so yeah. you know we have these two uh, uh, rural and urban uh, examples that you know uh, offer uh, some amount of uh, differences of the kinds of challenges that both uh movements faced mm-hmm. um so and we also know about you know uh, ambedkar's message that dalit should move away from villages and that you know they uh, mm-hmm. are, are a place of intense immense exploitation um and move to urban areas so i'd like to complicate this through the work that you've already written about uh, and to understand more about the rural urban dynamics and and particularly about how you've mentioned that st- uh, strikes are a lot harder to you know carry out in rural areas because of the hold of uh um the caste order and uh, you know upper castes in these area in the rural areas in uh, urban areas also because ambedkar in 1927 and after that opposed to the various strikes that were happening in bombay and uh, ambedkar uh, said that it is unnecessary to call a strike again and again when there is no need ambedkar was supporting to strike but he knew that how people were being affected uh, particularly dalits when they are not getting jobs in uh giving uh, industries and uh, other well paid in the uh, departments and uh, the, this kind of uh, uh, continuous uh, strikes uh, were not uh, helpful for vulnerable working class uh, people so uh, we can see that uh, in the cities uh, uh, when there is a strike at least workers had a chance to join other jobs or find other sources for survival during the strike in cities uh, were uh, this working class are more uh, in class solid- solidarity than uh, clear caste division in villages in villages you find that there is a clear class division and uh, that solidarity solidarity doesn't operate in ca- class uh, in uh, villages so uh, because there is a clear dependency on the saukar khots and it was absolute dependency and uh, the dependency in village ambedkar understood it was hierarchical and it operates in relations of caste okay so it is not a dependency between two class it was a dependency in relations of caste okay so it was a hierarchical so dependent act uh, so uh, uh, he knew that uh, the independent act of protest was controlled by immediate caste so a particular caste is uh, uh, is uh, is moving uh, ahead for the protest or the strike then the immediate caste will control to that caste so that 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 that, that the independent opinion was controlled by uh, caste hierarchy and uh, also graded inequality caused even further suffering to untouchable tenants because th- therefore we can see that during village strikes untouchable tenants had to obey their caste duties to other uh, tenant caste uh, as well because uh, uh, when all tenants were uh, in a strike uh, but untouchables had to follow uh, caste duties in Bal- in barter system they had to serve their caste duties to other tenants so if they are refusing then there will be a caste conflict so whenever there is a strike uh, the dalits had to play double duties they had to obey the, the tenants with whom they are standing in solidarity and 
they had uh, they, they they lead to remain with uh, uh, tenants uh, against court also so we we could see that there is there is a multi layer uh, dependency on different caste so this economic dependency in villages ambedkar ambedkar could understood that it's it's a very fragile okay so unless and until you build very strong class consciousness there is a always possibility that the different caste may be uh, exploited through through their caste interest so uh, that's why we can, we could see that uh, in the uh, anti khoti movement also the those tenants were fighting together against khots at some point when uh, mahar started uh, refusing uh, they, they they started not uh, started refusing not to work on uh, other tenants uh, uh, houses or uh, not to provide services in villages that time this uh, these tenants who were standing together in solidarity against khot they started making atrocities on uh, dalits okay so yeah the, because in 1935 ambedkar had announced that he is going to leave hindu religion and he asked many dalits not to perform not to uh, you know uh, celebrate hindu rituals so when this when these dalit they stopped uh, perf- the celebrating hindu rituals and uh, not uh, pro- uh, the, when they stopped uh, giving uh, caste services these tenants who were fighting with untouchables uh, they started doing atrocities on them so it was a very difficult uh, kind of uh, you know mobilization in rural areas where one can uh, find that uh, class caste interests were conflicting with class interest mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that was very difficult so that that was a different nature of urban uh, strike uh, and urban protest and rural protest mm-hmm. yeah i think uh, that was quite insightful and you know particularly what you mentioned about the the fact that in urban areas there's also a chance to work elsewhere um so so even while you're doing a strike there may be the option of uh, finding work elsewhere i mean you know it's obviously very extremely difficult and yeah. you've written about the challenges that even urban uh, protests faced uh, and uh, you know uh, the a uh, kind of um unity that was f- that was uh, difficult to form even in urban areas yeah. uh, but i wanted to maybe if you want to elaborate a little on the barter system that you touched on touched on briefly uh, to get a better sense of you know um uh, the kind of uh, difficulty that uh, uh, dalit rural residents found in uh, in 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 protesting uh, the khoti system this different caste tenants they were coming together for their emancipation and uh, they were asking that they should be under rehtwari settlement not in khoti settlement but uh, there were uh, different caste duties assigned to them to their to by birth so uh, different caste has to uh, you know work uh, within the caste uh, caste boundaries and and the, 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 that mobility was very much restricted to dalit caste of course uh, this uh, middle caste they are they were gaining two kinds of uh, uh, social interest and economic interest uh, although they were uh, affected by khoti system or the uh, they were uh, they, they were exploited by khots but they were getting benefit as a caste from a caste uh, particularly from dalits uh, as they were serving to them it was it was in the caste hierarchy they they were getting all the social privileges and economic privileges so it was difficult for middle caste tenants to not not to enjoy those uh, interest or uh, surrender those uh, all, uh, 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 all all the beneficiaries so uh, we we could see that when uh, these uh, uh, tenants also they were migrating bombay and coming back to uh, villages they were asserting their caste interest so we could see in the bolitdari structure the, the caste were operating uh, in a form of controlling each caste so it was a very strong hold on dalits so they could not move anywhere so that's why the call ambedkar had given to dalits to move to city it was because of that that uh, that, uh, that this was the caste which was serving to different caste so uh, uh, we could see that in the barter system that every caste was uh, uh, affected and they were slave in the uh, hierarchical system but th- there were some privileges next to mm-hmm. upper caste so uh, that's why it was happening mm-hmm. is there an example you want to give untouchables uh, particular villages um, uh, they start, they started refusing that uh, uh, we we won't provide you village services uh, in particularly one village in konkan in ratnagiri districts so uh, uh, and in kolaba also because ambedkar had uh, uh, complained uh, this to uh, district magistrate that uh, may, many atrocities are happening against mahars and dalits so uh, we could say we could see that uh, they were even uh, uh, muslims uh, khots although they, they 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 didn't have any concern uh, of course uh, they, they 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 were not worshipper of uh, hindu gods and religion but they were forcing to and uh, dalits to uh, you know celebrate uh, hindu festivals so they they will be in the fold of uh, cultural domination so you we could see that uh, this middle caste tenants they were asking this uh, uh, mahar tenants not to leave villages 
and if they remain in village village so they have to provide their service to other caste so it is something that they the privileges they were not ready to leave actually this was a process i could say that this was a becoming of class okay so, so it was a conflicting with the interest okay so uh, it was a becoming of uh, class and uh, 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 having a anti caste position or de brahmanizing them where they can leave their own caste interest okay so this was a this was a process uh, in which uh, the, uh, some of the uh, caste they were enjoying their caste privileges at the same time they were coming together and fighting against courts so it was a complex uh, story for anti caste movement at the one side they were having the class solidarity at the same same time that the caste solidarity will collapse in caste solidarity so it was a complex journey for yeah, anti caste yeah. movement at that time yeah and what is the role that women workers played in ambedkar's labor movement and and relatedly uh, how did uh, ambedkar view the role of women workers yeah uh, actually we know that uh, since uh, 1916 when he wrote first uh, text uh, caste in india since then he was uh, articulating uh, and theorizing caste and patriarchal issue and uh, it was very central issue in ambedkar's movement uh, that, that, that that patriarchy and uh, women's issue was very central to ambedkar's movement and ambedkar always particularly from the fa- first mass movement uh, and uh, gathering uh, was there in uh, mahar satyagraha ambedkar gave uh, special time and importance to uh, women uh, who were present there so because he knew that uh, there is a double kind of oppression women were facing and particularly uh, dalit women so uh, it, uh, we can see in 1930s when ambedkar was having strong uh, working class movement in bombay and uh, many of his activist uh, madke bua pradhan solanki and all they were mobilizing people in uh, uh, bombay uh, working class localities women were the van- vanguard in uh, these different protests you could see the different pictures also if uh, the, those pictures are available uh, everywhere you could see that the women are standing on the front women are holding banners women are you know shouting slogans and they are because in 1942 also when ambedkar organized this schedule uh, first gathering of schedule caste federation he uh, addressed to women and there was a membership uh, that a large number of membership was done by women so uh, that, that, that that was a central issue in ambedkar's movements and in bombay uh, particularly we can see that there were many municipality strike which went for months that there is a record in different uh, newspapers in times of india bombay chronicle bombay sentinel we could see that those details that the bombay was almost collapse and women were not ready uh, and uh, men and women not, were not ready to work on uh, uh, work uh, for municipality unless and until they get uh, their rights so they what they were fighting they were fighting for wages they were fighting for their permanent jobs because in villages we have seen that ambedkar was uh, in every state ambedkar was fighting uh, uh, against the caste economy because in caste economy you don't you don't you, you are not paid by money you are not paid uh, with your service we are you are not uh, getting a dignified life so ambedkar Ambe, uh, here first time you can see these uh, dalit women and women different caste women but the, the, when they are coming in bombay they are asking their human rights they are asking for wages they are asking for uh, basic facilities and the working condition they are they are asking for working hours and uh, they are asking for to uh, you know solve their grievances so there are different stories uh, were published in janta newspaper that how women workers were fighting in pune solapur Na- in nagpur particularly in the bd uh, B- uh, in the bd factories uh, most of the women were working and there were many local newspapers runs run by Har- Go- hardas and uh, tirpure and they were fighting for women's rights because it was a independent labor party who were which was addressing women's issue in um, uh, textile industry in nagpur and textile industry in Bom- bombay because uh, we have seen that in bombay this weaving industry department was not open to untouchable men and women so uh, we could see that women were at the forefront and in ambedkari jalsas also we can see that they had played very significant role as i said earlier that in bhajni mandali in the night and in the day time in uh, working class localities they will sing very nice uh, poem or songs for women and they will say that how ambedkar is savior for them how ambedkar protects them and how the congress is uh, pro bourgeois how, how congress supports to uh, capitalist interests how congress supports to upper caste interests how congress doesn't address to their issues how the khoti system is exploiting to their uh, their people back to villages and uh, uh, we have seen that when ambedkar became uh, labor minister he uh, started giving 
special attention to women workers to provide them legal protection for their work and dignified life so that is uh, that is a legal uh, on, on the legal field we have seen but uh, they were the vanguard in ambedkar's uh, movement in bombay and that that is uh, uh, that the best part that it, it it is visualized through different photographs which is available in large number Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah and i think this is also related to how early in the conversation we were talking about how um the importance that he placed on the social base of the party uh, and how the, you know those who were supposed to be different and he tried uh, made uh, significant efforts to make it different from other labor organizations yeah, yeah, yeah. um so so the importance of this uh, of this uh, broad base uh, social base that was actually uh, the 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 base that was most affected by capitalism um yeah. so that that that's quite insightful and is there something that you like to say that i have not asked about directly the labor movement need to understand that in indian society the caste and class has a strong roots of brahminical culture and capitalism unless and until we don't understand that how class is operating because in india we see that large number of capitalist class that is coming from the medieval banya caste okay and we see that they they they, they are not ready for any kind of enlightenment to take forward for their capitalist interest they are they are not ready but they are maintaining to, uh, to caste system so we can see that uh, the way caste uh, the, the way uh, in indian society the uh, this capitalist uh, it, it is not just uh, uh, what we can chronic capitalism they are they are not just uh, involved in political culture but they are involved in uh, the, the the religious culture also because the religious culture is giving hand them to exploit and rule over the people so uh, we need to understand that in indian society that this uh, unless and until rationalizing against a brahminical culture and fighting against capitalism one cannot have a strong class consciousness which can fight for uh, class revolution so it is very uh, uh, this is a need of time uh, for labor movement to understand uh, the reality of caste class and gender and how it is operating via, under the broader domain of uh, this uh, cultural hegemony yes definitely and and i'd like to start with a quick rapid fire round where we'll ask you three questions and we'd like brief responses yeah So we'll start with the first one. Yeah. What's one aspect of Dr. Ambedkar's writing and actions that you would like to learn more about? Reading Annihilation of Caste. Mhm. What's something that you're skeptical about in Dr. Ambedkar's work? The history of Brahminism and Buddhism. Can we uh, uh, understand uh, his history a uh, history of ancient India uh, his history of ancient India the struggle between uh, Brahminism and Buddhism only in two forms? and the last thing is uh, we've already touched on this but uh, if there's any other recommendation that you have to further and unify fragmented social movements so uh, different uh, uh, organization like dalit movement adivasi movement women women's movement or the workers movement they all should come together so in one form so that will be the uh, that will be the bright future for all, all these movements yes okay uh, thank you so much uh, professor santosh suradkar for joining us on research radio we had an exhaustive conversation and we covered a lot of ground uh, today so thank you thank you so much uh, habishek for uh, inviting me for uh, this uh, interview and uh, thank you for your long conversation and nice questions <laughs> it was wonderful uh, talking with you having conversation with you and thank you so much to apw yes yes uh, thank you as well for making the time for us I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Santosh. Have you tried building solidarity with your coworkers? What has your experience been like? Do reach out to us via any of EPW social media accounts with your experiences or thoughts about this episode. This is the 5th episode of our special program that explores the multiple dimensions of Dr. Ambedkar's thought and practice. Do check out our previous episodes if you haven't already and we'll be back with a new episode in one week. Take care.